Villain of the Week is only a phrase in the Arrowverse. Their villains have all sorts of staying power. Plenty of Team Flash's greatest villains either had their destiny changed by the crisis or were never truly gone in the first place. A bunch of our old villains are back with fresh paint jobs! So we thought it would be a good idea to make a list of the 10 biggest threats lurking around Earth Prime. Just don't tell any of these villains that we counted them as down and out before, okay? We're all one big happy family now? No! No! Eobard Thawne. Here's a fun fact about the history of the Flash in DC Comics. Reverse Flash wasn't always the most serious villain out there. For a long time, many comic book readers considered him a bit silly and over the top. We'd argue Grant Morrison helped reshape Eobard Thawne's image. Still, in pop culture, it's the CW series Thawne that we all fear and respect. Currently, Thawne is a detached, amorphous being made up of the negative speed force. No, we're not making that up either, but we're definitely dumbing down the concept. The point is, Reverse Flash reaches across the multiverse right now, looking for Harrison Wells to inhabit. This whole scenario came about after Team Flash defeated him for the 100th time. Which is precisely why we put Eobard Thawne in the first entry. He's going to reappear sometime in the future of this series. He's Barry Allen's greatest rival, and he knows how to torture our protagonist. It's only a matter of time before he takes away someone or something else that Barry cherishes. It's what makes the CW Reverse Flash so scary. He's always ready to strike. Black Flash Hunter Zolomon's goal was to destroy the multiverse back before it was cool. Everybody knows about the many-verse. Multiverse. Lucky for him, his version was eventually realized by the Anti-Monitor. What became clear is Zoom intended to do more than just steal Barry's speed and crash everything into one universe. When the crisis does happen, the entire Zoom storyline changes and offers up exciting possibilities. We know that Cisco's timeline has Zoom bringing an army of metahumans to fight Barry through what might be a singularity in the timeline. Team Flash still managed to defeat him, but it's not clear how exactly it happened now. Sure, we can assume Hunter Zolomon is turned into Black Flash again, but that doesn't mean he's completely gone. Expect any attempts to alter time and form a paradox to be met by the Black Flash again. He's basically the chief time wraith, which even makes Savitar destroying him feel less than concrete. This twisted up version of Hunter Zolomon is bound to return soon. It's only a matter of time. This villain is a prime example of how the Crisis on Infinite Earths changed everything about the Arrowverse. The Trickster A lot of villains were listed in Cisco's new Most Wanted list, but we couldn't help but notice the Trickster was seen on that list. What does that mean for the character? When we left the Trickster family, they were all separated, and Mark Hamill hasn't returned to the role in some time. We might see a change soon. Face it, the Trickster is essentially a more light-hearted version of the Joker. Having him in the series always adds a bit of levity to the often serious and worrisome main storyline. But I tricked them, which is so me. There's still a place for him in the problems of Central City, even if it's a one-episode cameo. Technically, we know there's a classic version of the Trickster that was always creating chaos back in Earth 3. We don't know what happened to him in the new revised multiverse. For all we know, he migrated over to Earth Prime and created a darker version of Prank and Axel. Speaking of Axel, it's even more likely the torch was passed down, and we'll see the second coming of the Trickster very soon. The pranks continue! Who am I kidding? I'll never be like him. Grodd Gorilla Grodd is one of the most on-again, off-again villains in the series. Fans keep waiting for him to summit the peak of evil accomplishments, but we've never gotten to that point. Okay, so we got close with his battle against King Shark, but the comic book Grodd is way more sinister than that entire battle. Now we're being led to believe he's a good guy? Eh, we're not buying it. Grodd is a mastermind. It's easier to believe he used Flash to defeat a more significant threat to both of them. Last time he wanted to live out his life in Gorilla City, things never stayed that way. The show writers love giving him an exit point and then randomly bringing him back in for an episode or two. Now that's entertainment! We see a lot of potential for more Grodd storylines in the future. Now that Earth-38 is fused with Earth-1, we could see a more realized version of the Legion of Doom, where Grodd gets a seat at the table. Think of everything the show did for Reverse Flash. They did the exact opposite for Grodd. Bloodwork Was the bloodwork we saw in Flash Season 6 a bit disappointing? Eh, not really, but he was undoubtedly hurt by the fact he was only a half-season villain. They put him in the same grouping as Dr. Alchemy, and it hurt any attempt to build momentum for the character. As far as his actual powers go, the show did an excellent job giving him a buff and making him more of a threat with his zombie army. Dr. Ramsey did offer an emotional threat to Team Flash, and something we didn't see in the season before is Rampage. 
They also were able to capture him instead of destroying him, which isn't super common in the history of the show. Bloodwork even came into play during the second half of season 6. We all know that Mirror Iris offered him a chance to escape, and he didn't take it. His exact line was that he plans on playing the long game. That's a weird way to face his situation. Clearly, the producers want us to see that they're not done with blood work. You need my blood. How grand. There's a storm coming. Mirror Master. Ah, uh, boy, this entry sure turned into quite the confusing proposition. We're just gonna go with both Mirror Master characters for this list because we don't know the state of Sam Scudder in this new Earth. We will say Eva McCulloch clearly is the more threatening of the two. She's the Mirror Master we all expect when we hear the name. Eva is also still a big player in the series, now given her successful takeover of McCulloch Technologies. She claims to not be one of the Flash's enemies, but it sure seems like it. Mirror Master is one of the greatest threats to Flash when they decide to work against him. It's only a matter of time before Eva decides to twist Barry's arm for more power. Meanwhile, Sam Scudder is likely at large in this universe, working on his minimal ability to bend the mirror dimension. We may never see this version of the character again, but we seriously doubt that. After all, Eva is clearly an Earth 2 creation. Scudder is and always will be a part of Flash's rogues gallery. Infinite reflective loop that even you can't escape. The Top Speaking of Sam Scudder, his partner in crime, Rosa Dillon, hasn't shown up in recent seasons. This feels like a shame given the fact that The Top tends to be a significant villain in a number of the comic book storylines. We even saw in one version of the future that Mirror Master and Top combined into a dangerous combo. When they're together and used in creative ways, they pose a real challenge. It's been a disappearing act for Dylan ever since that one moment in the spotlight, but there's hope. Rosa Dylan is a name on Cisco's Who's Who list as well. That fact alone brings us a light at the end of Top's unfortunate tunnel. Mirror Master got a facelift, though, and it makes us wonder about Top. After all, there's been a shift in the multiverse, and that gives the creators flexibility to refresh Top and make her the threat that she can be. No matter what, Villains of the Week will always be just that at the end of the show. I like it. However, making it feel like it could be more by giving her a slightly more prominent role would make a difference. Trajectory Yeah, we saw her totally turn to dust right in front of our eyes. Basically, she got snapped before anyone from the MCU. I don't even know who you are. Making her a total hipster. Many fans believe the first female speedster in the show will likely never return to the series. However, we can't help but consider a role she might play later on in the series. If things work out how they should. Godspeed is here. The velocity formula is now perfected. It's what appears to have given August Hart his connection to the Speed Force. The question now is, what does the new Velocity 9 do to all the other people who failed originally? Things could easily change for trajectory. We also see that the Speed Force is changing and reshaping as the series progresses. It's possible trajectory is still in there the same way Thawne is stuck in the negative Speed Force. It feels like a long shot, but think about the other possibilities it opens up. I'm open to the possibility. Barry's connection to the Speed Force would take on a whole new meaning, and Trajectory could be brought back with more knowledge making her dangerous. Weather Wizard Can we just take a moment to appreciate the fact that they brought back Weather Wizard in Season 6? Honestly, it was a pleasant surprise to see one of the first villains Flash ever faced make a return to the series. Getting to see Weather Witch and the drama of that encounter play out was well worth the wait. Anyway. Thanks for helping me drop a truck on my dad. In a way, it's what we're hoping to see with every villain on this list. Some kind of return that genuinely matters, even if it's just for one episode. Weather Wizard is back in some capacity, and now we know he is again in Iron Heights. It's not the best case scenario for a re-emergence in a later season, but here's to hoping. We've seen plenty of crime family support and turn on each other in an instant. The same thing might happen with Weather Witch soon. The two of them working hand in hand at full strength would be something else. The biggest reason we want to see more Weather Wizard is for what he symbolizes. He's the benchmark for Barry's powers. Let's keep measuring them every season. Dwarf Star We wanted to round out this list with a pitch from way out in left field. Dwarf Star was a unique villain that had a memorable, although slightly cringy, look and outfit that helped him and his powers stand out. This is the reason I don't have any money in my savings. Oh, I get it. Not to mention the fact that he's the kind of villain on the show that doesn't care how robust Team Flash is. Dwarf Star is going to throw everything that he can at them regardless, especially cars. Of course, we know what happened to him and the other metahumans collected by the Thinker, but maybe it's a worthy idea to bring some of them back. 
They brought Ralph Dibney back, so it feels like cheating that they can't do the same thing with the others. Besides, the Thinker hardly ever used Dwarf Star's powers. At least introduce the character back again in some new way. It's the idea of a Honey I Shrunk the Kid style episode that makes us want to see this villain return. If not him exactly, then somebody with his powers. It's safe to say all the metahumans collected by Clifford DeVoe might be lurking in this new timeline. Still missing the Flash in your life? Well, like Team Flash facing the Thinker, we need your support. Like this video and subscribe to The Binger to show us that you want more Arrowverse content. Don't forget to comment down below and tell us what you want to see next. As always, thanks a lot for watching.